Assalamu alaikum. How are you all? I hope you would have enjoyed your weekend. Okay, today we will be discussing uh, the topic of uh, Pakistan studies which is a very important topic and that is political systems and political parties of Pakistan. Right? You can see it on, on the screen. So, uh, uh, to begin with, what is a political system? Can anybody tell me? Okay. A political system is a system through which a polity is run. Polity means a state is run, right? So, since we are talking about Pakistan, so we will be discussing about the political system in Pakistan. Uh, if you remember, we have been discussing in the previous classes about the constitution of Pakistan, that is the 1956 constitution, then we had a 1962 constitution as well and then a 1973 constitution. So basically these constitutions are defining our political systems or the political system of the country. So uh, in the 1956 constitution as we all know that we had a unicameral legislature or a unicameral parliament right and it was a parliamentary system so uh, unicameral means there is one house of the parliament and parliamentary system means that the executive of the country is from among the members of the parliament like the prime minister who is a member of the parliament he has to be a member of the parliament so and then his cabinet members are supposed to be members of the parliament right like ministers or MNAs or senators but in the 1956 constitution in this case there was no senate so no senator at that time but yeah uh, members of national assembly so then that is that becomes a parliamentary system right so at that time in Pakistan the political system was unicameral and it was a parliamentary system in Pakistan right then in 19 we, we had another constitution we I would not go into detail about discussing that constitution or these constitutions which I'm mentioning over here but this is just for reference then uh, because we have already discussed it in quite detail in the previous classes so then we had a 1962 constitution given by uh, President Ayub Khan or General Ayub Khan you can say that was a unicameral legislature again there is only there was only one house of the parliament and the, uh, the the form of the government in the country that was presidential form of government now what happens in the presidential form of government that there is an electoral college right and that electoral college uh, is elected by the people and in return this electoral college elects the president right so the BD system of Ayub Khan and then that, that, that electoral college uh, was elected by the people and then they elected the president so that was a presidential system in the presidential system the, since the president is the chief executive of the country and uh, it is not the case in the parliamentary system because in the parliamentary system the prime minister is the chief executive of the country so in the presidential system the parliament is comprised separate of the executive uh, like in like in current day you can you can you can say that uh, you can see the system in the united states of america that is a presidential system where the congress is separate from the executive or the legislature is completely separate from the executive the executive is elected uh, by the electoral college and then the legislature is also elected either by the electoral college or by the people directly right normally it is elected by the electoral college in case of Pakistan in 1962 constitution so that president is separate and then the president has got all the liberty to uh, nominate his cabinet members and those cabinet members are not supposed to be necessarily from the parliament right from the uh, parliament because that is only the case in the parliamentary system but not in the presidential system right so the parliament is doing or the the, the legislature is doing the the uh, is playing the role of legislation it this is what it does normally and it is not involved in the execution of the laws which it makes right in the presidential system it is not in, um, uh, involved in that kind of a uh, process but in the parliamentary system it is involved so that was the case uh, in 1962 constitution in Pakistan that was the political system at that time 
Then we had the 1973 constitution given by Zulfikar Ali Bhutto after the dismemberment of Pakistan in 1971. We have discussed that whole issue in quite detail during this course, right? So I will not be uh, going back to that kind of de detail, but uh, just for uh, your understanding that then we had the 1973 constitution and that was a bicameral legislature under this constitution. Like there was one Senate, right? One National Assembly. So bicameral means two houses of the parliament. The parliament was made, was comprised of two houses, the Senate and the National Assembly. In the Senate, all provinces were given equal representation. While in the uh, uh, National Assembly, the lower house of the uh, legislature, uh, the representation was given on the basis of population of a province. Right? So that is why the larger provinces, uh, uh, the provinces which had uh, population greater in number uh, have greater representation in the National Assembly and vice versa. Right? And it was a parliamentary, it is a parliamentary system uh, like the chief executive of the com country is supposed to be uh, elected or selected from uh, the national, from the members of the National Assembly, the, normally uh, the leader of the, pa the party in majority in the National Assembly. So that person is elected and that is a Prime Minister and then that Prime Minister, he uh, makes his own cabinet to run the daily affairs of the country. And these uh, cabinets, uh, uh, members are known as the ministers because they run, they had different ministries and they run these ministries. So this, they are all supposed to be from within the parliament, right, either a senator or a member of the National Assembly. So that is why it is known as the um, uh, parliamentary system. Again, we have a parliamentary system in the 19, under the 1973 constitution and it is a bicameral legislature. So this is a brief about the political system in Pakistan. Uh, then we have different provinces, in different provinces again uh, this parliamentary model uh, is implemented but there is a unicameral legislature like just the provincial assembly and there is no upper house in that, right? And the chief minister, the chief executive of the province, he is usually selected uh, from uh, uh, the party, uh, from the leading party, the leader of the leading party in that province uh, who is elected by the people and part of that house of the provincial assembly and then uh, again the same process is repeated and he becomes the chief minister and then he selects his cabinet members uh, from among the MPs or the member of the provincial assemblies you can say that right so he um, select those members from the provincial assembly and then he makes his own cabinet to run the administrative affairs within the province uh, and that is the executive in the province right now again we have a very important uh, uh, because as I have been mentioning that we have political parties and the political party, the party in majority and the party in minority. So the thing is that that we in the parliamentary system, we have a party system, multi-party system in Pakistan. There are usually two party systems and um, a one party system, but in Pakistan we have a multi-party system, not two party systems, right? So. Uh, what is a political party and what should be the role of a political party? This is what we will be discussing in detail in this class, right? So if, if we want to de define a political party, right, it is an organized group of people with at least roughly similar political aims and opinions that seeks to influence public policy by getting its candidates elected to the public office. Right? So, by this definition, if we um, operationalize it, it is an organized group, right? Right? Political party is an organized group. What does it do? That uh, it influences the public policy through its candidates. And these candidates are usually elected, they are elected by the people, at least they contest in those elections by the, uh, which are regularly conducted. We will be seeing another election in 2018 um, uh, this year, right? So that is political parties are, are contesting in elections, right? And they have different certain kinds of political aims, like a party would be saying that, okay, I will 
uh, for example, uh, give respect to vote. Another party would be saying that vote for change. Another party would be saying that, okay, uh, vote for religion because we want to implement religious laws in the countries. Another party would be saying that, okay, vote for um, equality in the country because we want to be prosperous and that is why uh, everybody wants to be prosperous so we will be making you prosperous if you vote for us so these are the kind of aims of the political parties and these aims are usually aligned with the aims and objectives of the people and they are kind, uh, kind of finding out the gaps uh, which haven't been fulfilled and the people are aspiring for that the people usually wish that these kind of things uh, uh, should have happened and then these political parties then they devise their own manifestos they, j they just you know uh, devise their own slogans and then they go to the public uh, and ask them to vote for them so that they can serve them better this is how it is and then when this party these parties are elected or this party or party A or party B is elected then they go to the public office and they implement their either implement or they do not implement but yeah usually they implement their manifesto whatever they have been promising to the people during the electioneering then they implement it when when they are ultimately um, made in charge of the public office right another definition of political parties is that an organization of people who share the same views about the way power should be used in a country or society right through government and policy making definitely the power would be used through government and policy making right so uh, a political party would say that okay power should be used in a very humble manner not in a dictatorial manner right so usually uh, people who think that this political party is thinking uh, the same would vote for that political party why, and, and another angle of seeing towards uh, seeing these things is that the political parties go to the ground they ask people they ask people how power should be exercised and when they come to know about the opinion of the people then they devise their own aims they say okay we will be exercising powers like this like this like this whatever people have been asking for if we are selected if we are elected not selected like selected by the people uh, because whenever a person is voting for some party he is basically selecting one that one candidate among the rest of the candidates uh, and that is why he votes for that person right but ultimately it is election not selection right so if that party is elected to the public office uh, to the government then they will be reflecting the aspirations of the people in their own uh, manner right okay now political parties in Pakistan because Pakistan is a democracy and a democracy cannot be run without the participation of political parties so there are around 90 fringe parties in Pakistan political parties in Pakistan right there are small parties like um, uh, they are there are some parties which are limited to a few districts not even the whole province right so uh, th uh, these kind of parties we call them fringe parties small parties right but then uh, they just use their cards wisely to be form uh, to, to become you know part of the government in a coalition kind of a government right situation so these fringe parties are there right in two party system you know these uh, small parties are not there because there is a certain uh, standard of a party if a party has got this much vote bank then only that party can con contest in the national elections or the general elections but in Pakistan is a multi-party system in Pakistan we have got this multi-party system so we can uh, not bar these small parties though they would uh, you know um, eat on the vote bank of the larger parties but still they are there right okay then we have around a dozen of mainstream political parties in the country right in these political parties you name it you can you can name these mainstream a dozen of mainstream parties like for example uh, pakistan people's party pakistan muslim league pakistan tehreek insaf jamaat e islami juif awami national party right and these kind of parties they are then balochistan national party and 
Pakhtun Khwa Mili Awami Party and these parties. So these are main stream parties and they are kind of known to the people largely, right? Because they are above the uh, uh, districts. They, 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 are, they are at least in a few districts, not only in one district or two districts, right? More than a few districts. So they, they, they are like five, six or eight districts. They would have this majority and then they can win seven, eight, nine uh, National Assembly seats if, if they are voted, right? So they have this vote bank and that is why we call them the mainstream political parties, right? At times these mainstream political parties along with some fringe parties, they just merge into one party, party for political purpose. Like for example, uh, in 2002 we saw Muttahida Majlis Amal, MMA, right? So uh, it was a composition of many political, re many religious, pol uh, religious political parties, uh, like jamaat e islami JUIF, and then JUI Shirani group, and then there are a, a, a few more factions of the JUI. All those factions of JUI, and then some uh, other sectarian political parties also uh, became part of that MMA, and. Uh, uh, we, we, we are hopeful or we are hoping that they are kind of uh, thinking that they would come together in the upcoming election uh, in 2018 these political parties, religious political parties will uh, form their own uh, alliance again under either the name of MMA or some other name but they will form this alliance. So uh, these are kind of uh, the, the, even these two or three mainstream parties they come together along with some French parties to uh, increase their vote bank and uh, vote ba uh, bank and uh, uh, fight for their common cause which they think is necessary at that particular point of time. Okay, uh, then these parties in Pakistan primarily try to find a breathing space and survive. Why I say this? Because uh, usually in Pakistan we have seen many dictatorships in the country, right? Uh, three main dictatorships and if you count Yahya Khan, so then we, 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 we have uh, four dictators in, the, in Pakistan. And usually whenever a dictator would come, as I have been discussing it in my previous lectures, whenever a dictator would come, this uh, civilian political elite and civilian political parties, uh, these political parties, they would come under fire from the dictators, right? So either the parties would join them or the electables would join them under a new party, under a new name to serve the purpose of that dictator or either they, uh, so they usually the mainstream parties would vanish, right? And that is why they always struggle to find a breathing space and survive under immense pressure. Right. Uh, luckily, fortunately, this is not the case right now because Pakistan in Pakistan there is a continuity in the pro in the process now. Uh, the the second parliament is about to complete its term, and then we will be going to the caretaker government and uh, then uh, to the election, and then a third parliament will be elected. So in Pakistan, it is not the case. This 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 trend is changing. Uh, parties are thriving now, right? But they still struggle, right? They still struggle, and uh, we we see we see the politics. Uh, usually, big parties they blame establishment that okay, these uh, our candidates are uh, carved out from the parties, from the mainstream parties, and yoke together uh, in some other. Uh, 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 towards some other part, party which these uh, the, the, the establishment wants to be elected so the electables we call it or the turn courts whatever we call it they are usually you know cut from one party and then they join the other party the party which they think is going to win so this is kind of you know the the struggle for survival is there it, it is always there right like for example if we see in 2002 to 2008 in that parliament, in, uh, right? If we see, we have seen Pakistan Muslim League Qaid Azam PMLQ, right? So this Pakistan Muslim League Qaid Azam was made of uh, different members who were previously part of Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz group or Pakistan Muslim League, uh, 
uh, but then under the uh, uh, under the pressure from uh, uh, the dictator at that time Pervez Musharraf uh, he just wanted to be a democrat as well so what he did was that uh, the establishment influenced these uh, electables who were prominent notable figures in their own areas and they they knew the art of uh, election and uh, the establishment uh, yoked them in that one uh, party uh, which was formulated at that time uh, with the name of Pakistan Muslim League Q right so uh, the breathing space was not provided and the Pakistan Muslim League the previous Pakistan Muslim League which was uh, led by Nawaz Sharif uh, basically uh, found it really hard to survive right only a few members of that party left with Pakistan Muslim League and the rest of them they joined Pakistan Muslim League Q then what happened in 2008 that all those members again they just you know left that Pakistan Muslim League Q made it uh, a party which could easily be ignored because of its political weightage because no one was there with that party then you know uh, uh, except a few uh, pioneer members and you know uh, a few other members they were there the uh, Elahi brothers and the Chaudhrys of Punjab uh, Gujarat and the, the rest were not there and then they joined either Pakistan Muslim League or Pakistan People Party or Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf and some of them you know so the, 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 these electables or the turncoats they were dispersed so that is why I say that they find it difficult uh, to survive but then again you know political parties they always try to capitalize on some issues to ask the people that these are the issues and if you elect us we will address these issues so if we see that the, the, the diversity of issues in Pakistan there's there are a range of issues in the country so uh, this is a very fertile land Pakistan is a very fertile land for political activities and that is why for political parties because there are many issues in Pakistan the issues of governance the issues of poverty the issues of human rights the issues of even animals right the issues of environment and the issues of energy you know the water crisis and you know you you just name it there are a lot of issues and these issues can be addressed by the political parties by appealing to the to the masses that if you elect us we will address either the poverty in Pakistan we will address either the uh, either uh, the human rights abuse in the country we will either address the issue of bad governance in Pakistan we will either address the issue of water crisis in Pakistan because mind you water scarcity is rea is a reality and Pakistan will be hit by it uh, quite hard in a few uh, years so water scarcity is there and you know there are a lot of issues environmental degradation is there deforestation is there and you just name it so these political parties political parties usually the 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 the, the issue of healthcare in the country the issue of education in the country so these political parties can find a lot of issues for them to address right and that is why pakistan is called i call it or usually uh, many other people call it a fertile land for political activities so political parties even if they find it difficult to, to survive they find it quite easy to come up with uh, um, a viable approach viable agenda uh, for change or for whatever you know for reforms in the country and to address these issues so that is why uh, politicians have a lot to do and political parties have a lot to do and that is why Pakistan is a fertile land and politics will always be there in this country because issues are there and when issues are there you always come up criticizing either the dictator or the political um, uh, civilian po uh, political elite for uh, not addressing those particular issues and then you say okay if you elect me I will address if you elect my party our party will address this issue in this in such and such manner you criticize the policies of the existing establishment and then you uh, propose a way forward for yourself uh, in that right so that is why um, people call Pakistan a fertile land for political activities right 
ओके नाउ पोलिटिकल पार्टीज इन पाकिस्तान राइट दे हैव यूजली रिमेन्ड अंडर डेवलप्ड ड्यू टू वट अथॉरिटेरियन पोलिटिकल कल्चर इन द कंट्री राइट इम्बैलेंस बिटवीन पावरफुल स्टेट एंड वीक पोलिटिकल इंस्टीट्यूशन नाउ लेट मी एक्सप्लेन इट अथॉरिटेरियन पोलिटिकल कल्चर इन 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 पोलिटिकल पार्टीज इन द वेस्ट इन द डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज देर इज नो अथॉरिटेरियन कल्चर अ पॉलिटिशियन हुम वी इलेक्ट और हुम द पब्लिक इलेक्ट इज यूजली अ वेरी हम्बल पर्सन राइट because he hasn't seen this authoritarian approach by his predecessors but over here in pakistan when we see this authoritarian culture in pakistan usually our parties are made by elites right in the country take the example of pakistan muslim league uh, the original pakistan muslim league which was uh responsible uh, which which takes the credit and duly takes the credit of making pakistan a reality if you uh if you analyze the leadership of that party at that time usually they were elites they were nawabs right nawab wakarul mulk and you just name it you know there are many other names they were nawabs so they were elites right and they were in a habit of uh they were in a habit that people would be subservient to them so they would serve masses but the masses would be usually subservient to them right so they would vote for them then if you see pakistan people's party again we have seen it it was made by a landlord right zulfikar ali bhutto so if this pakistan people's party was made by zulfikar ali bhutto who was a landlord then there is no you know that the problem in this scenario is that there is no internal democracy in parties then right because uh, if you introduce internal democracy within the party uh, it is quite uh, probable yeah it is probable that the one the elite the person from the uh, political elite who would have made that party would be voted out of the leadership of the party if he if he or she introduces this uh, uh, internal uh, democracy or internal election within the party right so that is why so that weak culture is there and that is why we see that authoritarian political culture is there even uh, in the current age uh you would you come across a lot many news uh, in the newspaper in the electronic media where the politicians they go to their constituencies during electioneering and then they ask they pressurize the people to vote for them right so this is a kind of authoritarian political culture the leaders the civilian leaders who usually cry that they haven't been given an opportunity Uh, a level play, playing field by the military establishment to serve the country but these authoritarian political elites uh, when they come to power then their own approach towards the masses is authoritarian and that is why political parties in pakistan they have usually remained under developed because this is a common saying in pakistan that uh, politics is not the game of a poor person the game of a middle class person it is the game of a rich a person who is from the elite right from the political elite so that is and it is usually in many cases it is true you can you can ignore a few uh, political parties they could not uh, thrive for example jamaat e islami uh, the current leadership of jamaat e islami that is sirajul haq he is from the middle class right but that is then in that party the, that in internal democracy is there that is why people from uh, middle class can also come to the forefront and lead the party again another political party which could become uh, a good model for the rest of the political parties in pakistan that is mqm right but then unfortunately the leadership of that party uh, is in the hands of altaf hussain uh, and he is the founding father of that party as well and uh, so this, though the slogan is that that it is the party of the people from the middle class 
but the middle class uh, can reach up to uh, some extent like you know second or thir uh, third tier leadership but not to the top leadership you know the, 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 the head of the party is the same person uh, and he does not allow anybody to you know replace him so that is again but we have just that one party jamaat e islami that is my humble view you can uh, you know you can just um, challenge me you can say that no this is not true there is another party then name it that that is also a democratic party and i will accept it right but according to my limited knowledge i think that there is only one jamaat e islami uh, which has this internal uh, democracy in it and, and there is no other party in pakistan pakistan muslim league pakistan tehreek e insaf pakistan people's party awami national party jui you know why these parties the uh, factions are made out of these parties because like pmln so juif jamaat jamiyat ulama e islam fazl ur rahman pakistan pa people's party sherpao and pakistan people's party parliamentarian so these factions are made because you know the the leadership from uh, the second and third tier leadership they think that the the top leadership is not going to give us way to lead the party and let's make our own party and then they make an another party which is an usually which is usually an offshoot of that uh, main party so th but then we do not see any jamaat e islami siraj ul haq aur jamaat e islami some other faction in this that is one jamaat e islami and the thing is that that this internal democracy is there and people are satisfied with that system right so th this is my logic for that that maybe that is why that uh, no offshoots are um, visible um, of jamaat e islami right then uh, okay uh except for the right wing religious political parties the majority political parties of pakistan um, in pakistan majority of the parties in pakistan they are least interested in any form of political education of the masses now this is again a very um this, i would say this is a dilemma of pakistan that except for, from a few right wing religious political parties and uh, again i would say that Uh, you can say that jamaat e islami is there because uh, they just educate their members their masses about their manifestos and about um, uh, political activism and about political process education about the political process is what i mean from it right here uh, right now right so over here so the rest of the parties they are not interested in the education of the masses and you know what for a successful working democracy education of the masses is very important if the masses are not aware if they are not educated then that democracy is a bad democracy because an unaware lot of people would usually vote for uh, vote on different lines they 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 they're thinking might be okay my father was voting for this party so i should vote for this party okay this person has you know uh, th th this person came to my house when my mother uh, got died so i should vote for it, for him this is you know lack of awareness so th because uh, the the person is a good person okay if he has visited your house he is a good person if a person disses diseases in his family you just also go there and visit and you know for condolences but it does not make him eligible for your vote but who will educate the masses about it the political parties themselves but the political parties are in the hands of the autocratic people right so they do not make the masses aware about these political realities that vote is a very holy thing and you should you should cast is uh, it on the basis of merit and now what is a merit right so the definition of merit is again controversial so that is a very important thing that these political parties in pakistan they are not doing it because they want to remain in power if the masses are educated then they will not vote for them they will ask for their rights they will question them okay you have been in the parliament for such and such years and what have you been doing for us nothing so why should i vote for you again right these kind of things would be uh, these kind of voices would be raised by the masses if the political if the masses are educated by these political elites so that is why masses 
you know, uh, usually are not educated politically, they are not aware and uh, political parties are not interested in it because of their own vested interests, right? This is what we need to keep in mind. Okay, another feature of it is that, you know, they mostly rely on the speeches of the leaders, right, in public gatherings. Or uh, the view of the leaders disseminated through print and electronic media. But they do not have any concrete policy of the party with them. Okay, the leader said this in a speech. Okay, my leader, for example, leader A, he said this in the speech and he countered the argument of leader B in such and such manner. So this is what the masses usually know about the policy of the party and the policy of their leaders through their public speeches and their uh, statements in the print and electronic media. But they, with them, they have no concrete policy document of that party that okay, these are the economic problems of the country, these are the health the problems in the health sector, these are the problems in the education sector, these are the problems in the water sector, right? And these are the problems in the energy sector. Uh, this is the problem of the environment, these are the problems in the country and this is how this party is going to approach these problems in order to uh, resolve them, right? So this, this kind of document is usually not there with the masses, uh, the, the, the manifestos of the parties, they usually come a few days before the election, so the masses don't even find a time to uh, go through the, that manifesto. Uh, in detail and uh, with a critical view, you know, so they do not find this time. In the West, we have been seeing that uh, uh, there are proper political debates among the members, among the leaders of different political parties. Unfortunately, in Pakistan, this culture hasn't been developed so far. Uh, we can hope, we, we, we can hope that it might change in the future, uh, but up till now this culture is not there in Pakistan, right? So uh, neither the manifesto nor the culture of political um, debate is there in Pakistan, neither the manifestos beforehand are available with the masses. So that is why uh, this is a problem in the Pakistani political culture that in Pakistan uh, we usually uh, see that the followers are kind of blind followers. They do not have this critical faculty uh, activated against every political elite, every political party. And they, they rarely change uh, their parties. They just, they think that, okay, political party is like my religion. I would never vote for any other political party because my father has been uh, voting for this party because uh, my family, the whole family is over there in this party, right? So I cannot even think of voting for someone else. This is normally the psyche of the people in the country, uh, those who are not aware. While in the West, this is not the psyche of the people, right? They would vote on the basis of merit, uh, merit uh, uh, in majority of the cases. Right, and if even if their fathers, forefathers have been voting, let's say for uh, the Republicans, and now uh, a Democrat is presenting a viable option for them, right, a viable uh, solution for their problems, then these masses would would go. They would change their opinion within no time. They would go there, and then they would vote for the Democrats. Uh, they would not think that my forefathers have been voting for the Republicans for the past 100 years. They will say, okay, for 100 years the Republicans would have been serving the interests of the country, the interests of the public. But now they are not serving the interests of the public, so I should vote for the Democrat, right? And it doesn't make them a bad Christian, right? Or whatever religion they are following, it doesn't make them that bad in, in, in terms of religion. But in Pakistan, normally, usually people think, people equate this political affiliation uh, with kind of, you know, um, uh, with kind of, uh, uh, I would say that they equate them not like, you know, no, not equal to religion, but second to religion, this political affiliation, 
most of the people in Pakistan. So that is why, and then they are not aware. They 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 just are uh, they are not aware of the party policies as well. But they are just following it for I don't know what reasons, right? Okay. Then again, another thing: the tradition of the study circles, position papers, right? Uh, by the leaders and the workers, that was there in Pakistan up till 1960s. But it vanished with the passage of time. So if there is no study circle, right? What is a study circle in a political party? The study circle in a political party is basically a circle inviting people to study certain set of articles, certain set of facts in detail and then come up and discuss these things. These study circles are usually there. And normally uh, in the communist parties, these study circles are very famous, but they are in other parties as well. You know, they just uh, study different issues and then they discuss these issues and the solution for these issues and then they uh, go and uh, then they approach the masses and then they present these solutions to the masses to incorporate them, to educate them and then invite them to their party as well. Then another thing is the position papers, right? So position paper on different issues, what is the position of the party? on this issue, what is the position of the party on that issue. Election comes, uh, elections come after every four or five years, right? So, uh, but, but there are many issues which emerge during one election and the other election, during two elections. So what is the position of the party on those issues and then there should be a position paper. Uh, position papers should be regularly published by the party, political parties, but they are not published, right? Uh, this this uh, culture was there up till 1960s but then it vanished, right? So this is another drawback of the political parties in Pakistan, that they do not possess any kind of uh, policy papers with them or any kind of position papers with them. Uh, all these things appear when elections approach. Otherwise, they are um, non-existent. Okay. What is the historical, what are the historical reasons of weakness of political parties in Pakistan, right? Number one, within the colonial state structure, right, Pakistan inherited what? The state institutions, that is military, civil bureaucracy, right, and then political institution such as legislature and political parties. We inherited these institutions, we inherited the parties because Pakistan Muslim League was there and during the colonial structure, it was uh, erected during that structure, colonial, er colonial era, right? And then we inherited the civil bureaucracy and the military bureaucracy of the country was also inherited from the colonial masters in Pakistan. And initially, these things, these culture, these, the, uh, they were quite strong. Even the political parties in Pakistan, like I have been in the previous, uh, a few months ago, I just told you that in, up till 1960s, the position papers and the study circle was there in the political parties, and now it's not there. So uh, um, that represented a strong political party, uh, a, a strong structure where strong political parties were there, right? But later on, it vanished, right? Then what happened? The All India Muslim League, uh, which took powers from the British, uh, British India in 1947, right? It was unfortunately unable to transform itself, right? It was a party, you know, which was running a movement. Uh, and then that movement had achieved its end like in shape of Pakistan. Now this party should have diversified its goals, its objectives to consolidate this country, give it a strong foundation, political foundation. But unfortunately, even after um, the establishment of Pakistan, the conduct of Pakistan Muslim League was kind of um, embroiled in agitation. It, it could not come out of that shell, uh, you know, in, uh, in which it existed from 1906 to uh, 1947. Now the country was there, 
and now it should have transformed itself into a mainstream political party rather than a party which is just uh, running a political movement for uh, separation or independence right so it could not do that it was and it still remains or it then remained an elitist organization and does not practice internal democracy which I have just explained a few moments ago a few minutes ago right that this internal democracy is is not there and it is an elitist organization even if you see the current leadership of Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz or whatever the name of that Muslim League is Nawaz or uh, parliamentary Pakistan Muslim League CAF or whatever it is an elitist you know group elitist organization the filthy rich they are in the leading position in those part in all the factions of Pakistan Muslim League and then uh, they do not practice internal democracy in the country in, in their in their parties and that is why these different factions are made out of that one party or other party right so Pakistan Muslim League could not play this role on the other hand if you see the Indian National Congress in India it could evolve and it it is a very strong political party even till date it is a very strong political party but you just compare this Pakistan Muslim League with the all India National Congress and then you will come to the conclusion that Pakistan Muslim League stands nowhere because it has been divided into different factions it could not cater for the needs of the country uh, of the people of the country right so it could not devise it could not devise a policy to um, to, to 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 develop this country to uh, improve the uh, living standard of the people of the country and to remain a truly democratic party right because this internal democracy component is missing in Pakistan Muslim League while this component is not that much missing in the all India National Congress or the Indian National Congress right so this component is not missing uh, this is uh, mm, very unfortunate for uh, Pakistan that uh, the main party which uh, led Pakistan to um, independence could not help Pakistan uh, to address its problems and issues which it was facing right okay uh, then Islamic politics in the country another problem which is the Islamic politics in the country right since since Pakistan's inception the combination of self-interest and Islamic politics has complicated the problem of building a political organization with broad responsibilities to the larger society now what is this the combination of self-interest and Islamic politics this is again a dilemma now there will be self-interest of some political leaders right and they will be achieving their self-interest in the guise of Islam they would say that okay we will be doing politics Islamic politics and uh, the self-interest would not be achieved uh, the, uh, and it is not for the self-interest of uh, 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 of those particular leaders and this is in the name of Islam but they will be basically promoting their own interest in the name of Islam so this is again this is a combination of it and it has complicated the issue whenever a political party comes up with a solution to the problems of the people of the country and if that solution that proposed solution is somehow contradictory to the self-interest of the political elites of the Islamic parties right or political elites of any parties of any political party in the country they would just you know brand them anti-islamic and they would say that this is an anti-islamic slogan this is an anti-islamic person who is proposing this solution to you and he is you know uh, not sincere with the cause of Islam with the promotion of the cause of Islam in the country and that is why do not vote for him or her so this complicates the whole issue and uh, this is not the case in the current era it has been the case since the inception of Pakistan right I thank you very much we will discuss the remaining 
uh, topic in the next class, inshallah. Thank you very much.